okay let's go to the the deployment model related to the cloud computing means when we want to create or when we want to make a cloud infrastructure so what are the different model that we can use okay so the first model that we can apply or that we can use uh, with that we can create any any uh, model which is called public cloud then we have the private cloud and then third one is the community cloud and the fourth one is the hybrid cloud means as a company uh, if or as as an individual if i want to create any cloud so i need to create any of these cloud okay so the whole cloud is divided into four category of deployment so in that way we can deploy it the meaning of deployment is to create the cloud infrastructure so this is the for a way how we can create the cloud infrastructure so let's go what do you mean by public cloud so the public cloud infrastructure is provisioned for open use by the general public it may be owned managed and operated by a business academy or government organization or some combination of them it exists on the premises of the cloud providers so what is the public cloud so public cloud is nothing but the cloud infrastructure which is, which is open to all which is which is which can be used by general public okay and and how uh, it has been uh, operated and managed so it will be managed and operated as well as owned by any business entity any academic entity or any government organization or some combination of them and it exists in the cloud service provider premises so whoever is the cloud service provider uh, will make these type of infrastructure which will be used by anyone anyone uh, and that's why it is called public so in the public infrastructure whole your whole resources could be shared is just like your resource pooling so easily resource pooling could be done and uh, it is one of the uh, most uh, used uh cloud infrastructure uh, deployment model uh the usage of this type of services the uh, cloud services are um, the cost is less than all other deployments means it is for everyone that's why the cost is less now the second one is a private cloud so what is a private cloud the cloud infrastructure is provision for exclusive use by a single organization comprising multiple consumers business unit it may be owned managed and operated by the organization the third party or some combination of them that may exist on or off premises so it says that the private cloud infrastructure would be would be made exclusively for a single organization let's say i am a uh, a software firm and i want uh, the cloud infrastructure for my company only it means only my employee can use those infrastructure right if this is my goal then this particular uh, model is for me that is private cloud model is for me and uh, it will be managed and operated by either me or the third party who is making the private cloud for me let's say that if i uh, hired amazon or red hat or vmware any of the other company so it will be managed by the that particular company or the combination of my people as well as the company so it may be anything or it may be exist on my premises or it may be exist on the cloud service provider premises so let me tell you uh, in our odisha government Uh, and many of the other state government they have uh, 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 transfer their infrastructure to the private cloud already and uh, in uh, odisha government in bhubaneswar there is a okk uh, um, uh, odisha computing center uh, is there in bhubaneswar itself where uh, they have built the private cloud using the help of red hat so red hat people they have helped them to create their public uh, sorry private cloud
for odisha government so all the e com e com um, e uh, uh, business activity which is the site or it may be related to the government uh, uh, um, department all those things will be um, shifted to the pri private cloud and it will be managed by um, is a combination of both of them means the uh, red hat and the employee of the okec which is a government employee of the odisha uh, government they are actually managing them and it is on the premises of you can see the odisha government so it is a type of uh, infrastructure which is called private cloud then we have another type of infrastructure which is called community cloud community cloud with what will happen is let's say um, two or three organization they are working in the same project okay and let's say the autonomous car project where uh, people are uh, looking for the solution of the driverless car so for that let's say um, the uh, the tesla the uh, ibm the um, uh, mercedes the audi and and many other big companies they made the, the common community to research and development so what they do is they will use the community cloud in which what will happen is they will make a cloud infrastructure such a way so that it will be public among these four or five companies but it is private to only these four or five companies so that is nothing but the community cloud so which is restricted to those community only those firms only and there are some people who are involved in that let's say some 50 60 people from one company another 50 60 people from another company so as you can see let's say uh, 200 300 people are from different companies who are working on the same project so they will use community cloud so what is the community cloud as i just told you uh, let's go to the uh, definition of it the cloud infrastructure is provisioned for exclusive use by a specific community of customers from organizations that have shared concern it means that they are working in the same same sort of project or same sort of product that is a mission security requirement policy and compliance consideration it may be owned managed and operated by one or more organization in the community or a third party or some combination of them it may be exist on or off premises so there is no restriction that it should be exist in the premises of the of the user or the cloud service provider it it may be exist in any of the places but the thing is that there is uh, you can say um, the community cloud have the concept where uh, more than uh, two m2 co companies are uh, owning that particular cloud infrastructure for them the cloud service provider creates the community cloud now let's go to another cloud deployment model which is called hybrid cloud which is very famous nowadays now what happen in the uh, hybrid cloud hybrid cloud actually is a combination of public and private cloud where uh, the advantages of public and advantages of private cloud has been uh, combined together and made one uh, cloud infrastructure so that both the advantages could be taken care in one model and why it is famous uh, among the um, among the many people and why many research is going on on creating the hybrid cloud uh, will will answer it very shortly here so uh, let's go to the definition the cloud infrastructure is a uh, is a composition of two or more distinct cloud infrastructure maybe private community or public uh, that remain unique entities but are bound together by standardization and uh, uh, proprietary uh, technology that enable data and application uh, portability that is cloud bursting for load balancing between clouds now what will happen in this particular uh, a hybrid uh, cloud infrastructure is as i told you it is a combination of two or more distinct cloud infrastructure it may be the private community cloud it may be the community private cloud it may be the private uh, and public cloud so uh, it is a combination of anything any any um, combination can be taken care here um, the main advantage uh, of this uh, type of uh, cloud infrastructure is it will take the benefit of 
uh, the private cloud also it will take the benefit of public cloud also if it is a comprises of private and public cloud or it will take uh, a community and private so it will take the advantage of both the thing and uh, they will combine it let me tell you one example let's say we have made uh, a hybrid cloud or uh, i have uh, told uh, the i i told the cloud service provider to make a hybrid cloud infrastructure for me so what i'll get i'll get two infrastructure i'll get the public as well as the private now what we, what is the advantage the advantage is this if i want to put my customers critical data or my customers private data uh, into the cloud so i'll choose private cloud or private infrastructure for that why because private uh, in private infrastructure what will happen is whole hardware is dedicated to you means there is uh, no concept of you can say resource pooling means one whole infrastructure one whole uh, uh, the hardware is dedicated to you so here uh, the security will be more so in that sense where i want full privacy full security to my customer data i'll use a, a private cloud to uh, store them but what happen if i lose all the uh, all the resources of private cloud the thing is that i have to pay more so i'll use another cloud which is called public cloud in which i have to pay less so i'll put all the non sensitive data to the private uh, to the public cloud so that i have to pay less so the thing is that the cost effective of public and the security of private both i am getting in the hybrid cloud getting it so it is a uh, hybrid cloud is costlier than public cloud but it is uh, less costlier than private cloud getting it so that is the advantages um, we are getting in hybrid cloud but here we have to think of some sort of load balancing in which we can balance the load between private and public cloud means which data we have to send to the public and which data we have to send to the private that mechanism should be there in my infrastructure so that i can uh, make the classification of the data and i can send the data whichever is uh, is necessary to send in one infrastructure so it is all about uh, again uh, the th same thing is uh, is there uh, you can uh, see all those things which i told you and uh, this is the infrastructure that is uh, that is there means in the public cloud everyone can access it outsider can easily access it uh, in the private cloud you can see there is a boundary so only insider uh, of the company can use it outsider of the company cannot use it that is private in the community cloud what will have what will happen is more uh, more than two organizations will uh, will share the uh, the cloud and outsider will not be allowed that is community cloud and what happened in the hybrid cloud we have private infrastructure as well as public infrastructure so we can use private also and public also depend upon our requirement so if my requirement is to use to sensitive data so i'll use public infrastructure if i i need to use uh to store the data which is uh, not at all uh, sensitive data or not at all the data which uh, i i i i compromise my security and privacy so i'll send it into a private public cloud that is your uh, different type of cloud infrastructure that is public private community and hybrid cloud deployment right now Mm -hmm. so all those things that we have seen till now is is just the introduction part of the cloud where we have seen that what do you mean by cloud uh, what are the different uh, services provided by the cloud what are the essential characteristics of the cloud and what are the different deployment model related to the cloud now let's go to uh, the IEEE 802 project and how this project is uh, changing the world of communication in today's world that will see have um, will will have a look on that now iwe as you all know is a big community it has a 802 project this 802 project is all about communication communication means how will send 
the data from one um, system to another system or from one computing node to another computing node. In this regard, that project has been started. And the first standard of 802 point, uh, 802 project has been, uh, in, uh, has been uh, created when we have the concept of layers. We, we know about ISO and uh, TCP IP layers, right? I don't have to go, go to it again because you have already learned in the computer communication. So we have seven layers in OSI model, which is open system interconnection uh, OSI model, yeah, open system interconnection model in which we have seven layers. That model is the reference model, okay? And that is not a practically implementable model. And in that model, all layers are there and each layer comprises of set of and bunch of protocols. And one, some bunch of protocol will put in one layer related to their functionality and will cluster the uh, the protocol into one layer and we'll say it is, is layer wise uh, and division of the model. This, when the open system interconnection model that is OSI model has been, um, uh, has been suggested after that, uh, another uh, model has been suggested which is called TCP IP model, which is a five layer model. And this five layer model is the implementable model which we are using nowadays. So we are using TCP IP model right where we have five layers so what are the, those layers so we have the bottom layer is my physical layer then we have data link layer then we have um, uh, network layer then transport layer and the last one is the application layer so in these five layers uh, we use some sort of communication protocol and these uh, communication protocol need to be standardized so for that this ieee 802 project has been created and in this different type of communication uh, protocol has been standardized, getting it? So uh, the first uh, standardized project is high layer LAN protocol, uh, which is also called bridging protocol. And the name of that protocol is IEEE 802.1. Then we have, uh, you know, uh, the second layer that is your Data link layer has two layer. One is link layer control, another is a MAC layer. So that data link layer has the first layer, which is called link layer control. For that, what a standard has been made is 802.2. It is for link layer control. Then we have 802.3 ethernet. For the ethernet communication, we know about the ethernet cables, right? So for that, the standard has been done, which is 802.3. Then we have, we, we know about token bus, right? Token bus is also a communication model. It is, uh, the standard is for 802.4. Then 802.5 is for token ring in the MAC layer. Then we have 802.6 for MAN, right? Metropolitan area network. Then we have 802.7, which is broadband LAN using coaxial cable. Then 802.8 for fiber optic tag. Then 802.9 is for uh, integrated service LAN, that is IS LAN. Uh, then 802.10 is for the uh, interoperable LAN uh, services. So what is LAN? LAN is nothing but local area network. So how will communicate in the local area network? It is telling about all those things. Then 802.11 is for wireless LAN that we'll use frequently in our uh, access points. So um, whenever you use the access point, um, in the institute or whenever you make a hotspot in your mobile phone and you are using in your computer, that is nothing but this technology, which is 802.11. Here also we have some variation, 802.11B, E, N, in, in different way, means how we can make the connections, uh, what should be the what should be the data uh, rate, all those things will be there in 802.11. And there are different flavors, as I told you. 802.11a, 11b, 11e, 11n, all those are popular version of 802.11. Then 802.12 is 10-base VG cable. Then 802.13 is unused right now. 802.14 is cable modem. Then 802.15 is wireless pen, which is wireless private area network. Then 802.15.1 is for Bluetooth certification. So whatever Bluetooth technology that we'll use, it comes under 802.15.1. Then 
and we know that Blue Bluetooth has many um, classes: class A, class B, class C, class D Bluetooth. So generally, what we use, we use class B or C. Okay. Then eight zero two point one five dot two is is telling you about uh, uh, co coexistence between eight zero two point one five and eight zero two point one one. Uh, in both the technology, we have the uh, we have the uh, difference of the frequency and uh, the ranges and all, and how the data communication rate is is defined. Then eight zero two point one five dot three is high rate wireless pen. So up to that eight zero one point two is the low rate wireless pen. Now we have high rate wireless pen where the uh, the bandwidth has been increased. Then eight zero two point one five dot four. It is very famous for the IoT communications. So every IoT devices, every low rate or low cost or you can say low power devices will use eight zero two point one five dot four. In this we have different uh, different uh, protocol like Zigbee, wireless heart, uh, maybe in that type of technology we'll use in eight zero two point one five dot four. So this is very famous. Then eight zero two point one five dot five, we have mesh network of wireless pen. Then we have body area network one five dot six. Then visible light communication one five dot seven. Then broadband wireless access that is WiMAX. That is eight zero two point one six. Then one six dot one local uh, multi point distribution mm -hmm. uh, services. So all those are there, and you can see here. Uh, Eight zero two point two seven. We have a uh, network Zen layer. So all those are different. You can see the standard that has been used uh, very frequently, and these all all protocols are for the communication. Some of the protocols are uh, very famous, but all the protocol are standardized protocol. Okay. Now this is about your uh, IEEE eight zero two project.